Okay, today is the 6th of January, and we are up to about 87 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 around the world, and about 1.9 million confirmed deaths. So Happy New Year, welcome to the first video of 2021. We're now hitting a period where it's been over a year since we've been dealing with the SARS coronavirus 2 that causes COVID-19. So throughout some of these videos in the early part of the year, I'm probably going to mention on this date last year kind of facts just to remind us all of what a crazy year it was last year and how much we've learned and how far we've come in such a small and strange period of time. So as I say, today is the 6th of January and I'll be posting this video tomorrow like normal. So that will be on the 7th of January. And that's an inauspicious date in the history of SARS-2 because that was when we worked out it was a coronavirus. So at the end of December 2019, there were cases of not a novel pneumonia in China, and it was found to be spreading. Multiple cases were found in the early parts of January 2020. And on the 7th of January 2020, it was found that this was a coronavirus, and it was a new one, one that hadn't been previously described. So in this little period of time between now and when I post my next video, there's also another milestone for this virus in that we got the full sequence of the genome of the novel coronavirus on the 11th of January. Now, working out it was a coronavirus and fully sequencing the genome were two huge milestones that lay, lay the foundations for us to get to a point of being able to produce vaccines, which obviously we have now produced. The reason that that sequencing was so important is that once we had the sequence for the spike protein, that was then what was used to go into the mRNA vaccines and the DNA-based vaccine of the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. So without the sequence, it would be impossible to make the appropriate mRNA or DNA that makes mRNA to then make the protein which is being used to vaccinate people. Now, the reason I highlight all of this is because this short little video to start the year is just going to be talking about first hand or first arm experience of being vaccinated because I was fortunate enough yesterday to receive the first dose of my two dose regimen of the Moderna vaccine. So I was somewhat surprised to have received it so early in the year. The university and the hospital connected with the university here have doses of Pfizer and Moderna vaccines and they've been giving them out. And because we are always on campus, we as the lab ended up somewhat higher in the pecking order than people who are working from home constantly. So while I probably shouldn't be considered anywhere near as an essential worker as people in the hospital, we come close to that list, at least close enough that, as I say, I received my first dose of the vaccine yesterday. So what I thought I'd do for this first video of the year to keep it nice and simple and ease myself back into 2021 and doing videos and working and all those kind of things, just talk a little bit about my first hand experience of being vaccinated with the Moderna vaccine. As obviously more and more people are going to get vaccinated, people have concerns, so I thought I'd share my experience. Now, firstly, I will say whenever I get vaccinated or have blood drawn or any kind of needles, I have a very strong tendency to pass out. Uh, I say tendency to pass out. I pretty much always do. It's a weird involuntary response. I'm happy to offer up my arm to have it stuck. The needle goes in. The vaccine goes in. I'm OK for about five minutes and then the world goes black and I pretty much go unconscious for a few seconds and then come back to it's a very strange response but it's one that I've always had as far as I can remember at least since I was about 12 or 13 so I know that that's going to happen and I was treated incredibly well by the nurses giving out the doses at the hospital here so when there's stories about people fainting from receiving this vaccine going around at least for me that happens all the time so that's not something to do with the vaccine I would have been surprised if I hadn't to be honest I did have a second bout of feeling faint, which was a little bit strange. I don't remember experiencing that before. Uh, so I sat there in the lecture theatre where the vaccines were being given. And there's a mandatory 15 to 30 minute observation period after you receive the vaccine because they want to make sure that no one has any anaphylactic responses or anything like that. So it's being properly looked after. I was, of course, put into a 30 minute grouping for observation and about 20 minutes into that, I had another bout of super lightheadedness and nearly passing out. So that was a strange response, but it was one that I had when I first got the vaccine and one a little bit later. So, you know, it wasn't anything too out of the ordinary. And I will say that for the full hour that I had to be sat in that room under observation, a lot of other people came in and got vaccinated and left with no trouble at all. 
it wasn't that there was a bout of people fainting or anything like that. It was just me and my body's weird response. Everyone else seemed fine. They came in, they were injected. They sat in the Sletch theater for the observation period to make sure for no anaphylactic responses and everyone left. I think one person was even on the staff in the hospital who got their injection, sat there 15 minutes and then came and became a vaccinator. So everyone else was fine. It was just me and my weird response that meant I had to be monitored for an hour. And after that, felt fine enough. I went home, not into the lab, just to play it safe in case I passed out again so that I'd be on my bed, not sat in the lab doing something. But for the rest of the day, I felt mostly fine. Today, my arm has been sore. I can raise it to about there before it starts to hurt. Um, but again, that's a normal kind of feature of any vaccine. If I had a flu shot, it would be about the same. And the final thing to say is that there are warnings around this vaccine that there can be COVID-like symptoms within a period of 48 hours. So I say COVID-like symptoms. They used to be called flu-like symptoms. So things like a mild fever, muscle aches and pains, those kind of things. I didn't experience any of that last night. I might do tonight. I guess we'll see. Um, obviously, my 48-hour period will be finishing tomorrow. So first night, I was totally fine. Muscle soreness It's worse today than it was yesterday. I think I had a bit more range of movement yesterday. But beyond that, nothing major. So that's kind of my summary of what it feels like to get the Moderna COVID vaccine. I haven't grown a third arm or anything like that yet. Um, they were just the kind of same impacts any vaccine has on me there was nothing out of the ordinary for me and I was treated incredibly well by the staff and at the hospital here so even though those are or were things that were discomforting I felt terrible for about an hour during that in and out of consciousness phase and my arms sore and it got a bit itchy I'll tell you what I'd go through that 100% again in three weeks time I have no qualms about going back as long as I warn them that I might pass out because I'd much rather suffer a day or two's discomfort and inability to raise my arm than get COVID. And yes, I'm in a grouping, I'm 30, I'm in a group where I'm not likely to suffer severe disease. 99.99% probably in my age group survive COVID, but I don't want to run the risk of being in that 0.01%. I also don't want to run, run the risk of developing long COVID, which we still don't have firm numbers on, but seems to be somewhat common. There's people reporting issues from COVID diagnoses for months after the fact. Until last year, when the work here went crazy, I used to enjoy training and running marathons, and I want to get back to doing that. I don't want to run the risk, as it were, of getting COVID and then having decreased lung function for years after. So I'd much rather go through the mild discomfort of a vaccine than run the risk of developing long haul symptoms of COVID-19. And that's, again, just speaking from my personal view on all of this and why I was keen to get the vaccine, even though COVID-19 itself initially unlikely to cause anything more severe than the flu for me. So as I say, this video is very much a talking about first-hand experience of the vaccine and talking a little bit about my view on why, what, what scares me about COVID, I guess. It's not the fact that it would kill me. It's the fact that I could have long-term symptoms and issues from it. And the biggest fear that I could pass on to someone who would die, the vaccine, obviously is potentially going to protect both of those things. And of course, throughout the time I've been doing this channel, I've been saying how great vaccines are and how they're safe. And as long as the science is done properly, we can trust them. So it'd be wrong of me to refuse the vaccine. I was never going to do that anyway. But the YouTube channel obviously means I have to put my money where my mouth is. And then I can talk about it firsthand. So the final thing I want to say, just because I was talking about passing on the virus to other people, and that's one of my biggest concerns regarding if I had contracted COVID last year, it's still really important even as vaccines start to roll out, to continue wearing masks and continue physical distancing and all those kind of things. Because there's limited data so far about whether the vaccines are just protecting you from developing symptoms and severe symptoms, or whether they're fully blocking infection. And that's an important distinction because it's possible that if someone who's vaccinated gets the virus, they may just remain asymptomatic. Therefore, they may be a silent carrier of the virus and therefore able to transmit it onto someone. By wearing a mask, people who have received the vaccine stop themselves being a silent transmitter. 
Now, I remember that in the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine study, they did actually swab people who received their vaccine and it looked like they didn't have virus in people who had been vaccinated. But at least for Moderna and Pfizer, so far as the data I remember seeing, they didn't look at that at all. So we don't have data to say that people can't be asymptomatic carriers of the virus if they're vaccinated. So if you're watching this and you're in line to or have already started receiving the vaccine regimen, please continue to wear the mask. That's not something that's over yet. We've got a long way to go to keep protecting everyone out there who hasn't been and who can't be vaccinated against this virus. And that's all I've got to say on that topic for tonight. As I say, I'll, uh, I'll do another video when I receive my second dose and I'll see if there's any severe, strange, adverse events. I'll happily talk about them. Obviously a sample of one though. Next week, I'll be back to my normal type of videos. I'm uh, going to take broader looks at COVID-19 things. Um, not quite sure what I'll do for the topic next week, but potentially looking at the way that the UK are talking about only using one dose of the vaccines in order to vaccinate more people. Because if that's true, I have some concerns and I want to talk about the science behind why I have concerns about that as an idea. Uh, but we'll see what comes up during the week and what I may talk about. So with all that said, thank you for watching. Please drop a like if you found the video interesting for the YouTube metrics and leave any questions or comments below and I'll try and get to them as best I can. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want updates roughly weekly about COVID-19 from someone who studies coronaviruses in a lab and thinks about them a lot. And please share the channel with people if there's people out there you know who would like a scientist's view on things that are going on. So thanks for watching. Please stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask and keep calm and carry on. We will get through this pandemic.